live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering Red Hat Summit 2017, brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is Red Hat Summit, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman, and John Hodgson is here. He's the Senior Director of IT Program Management at Optum Technology. John, good to see you. Good, good to be here. Fresh off the keynote, we were just talking about the large audience, a very large <laughs> audience here, and uh, Optum, you described a little bit at the keynote what Optum is, but healthcare, sort of technology arm, which is not super common, but not uncommon in, in your world, but describe Optum and where it fits. Um, so in the grand scheme of things within United Health Group, you know, we have the parent company, of course United Health Group, our insurance side that does uh, uh, insurance, whether it's uh, public sector, you know, for large corporations as well as community and state government type work is United Healthcare. They do all of that. And then Optum is our technology side. We do uh, really all of the development, both uh, for supporting UHC as our main customer. You know, they're truly our focus, but we also do a lot of commercial development as well for United Healthcare's you know, um, competitors. So, um, big, big group. You know, as I mentioned in the keynote, over over 10,000 developers in the company. You know, lots of uh, spend. I mean, I think in the last year, our you know just internal uh, IT budget was like 1.2 billion dollars in just IT development capital. So yeah. it's huge. Yeah, it's and mind boggling. John, John can, can you talk? You, you've got that internal Optum cloud. Can you give us just kind of the kind of breadth and depth? You said 1.2 billion uh, there. What does that make up? What geographies does that span? How many people support uh, that kind of environment? Um, as far as numbers of people supporting it, I think we've got a few hundred in our uh, enterprise technology services group that supports Optum Cloud. Um, you know, we started Optum Cloud probably a half a dozen years ago, and it's gone through its different iterations, and part of my job right now is all about uh, enterprise cloud adoption and migration. So, um, you know, we started with our own environment, we call it UCI, uh, United. Uh, it was supposed to be converged infrastructure, but I call it our cloud infrastructure. It's really what it is. Um, and we've continued to enhance that. So over the last few years, I think about three and a half, four years ago, we brought in Red Hat and OpenShift. Um, we're on our third, third iteration of OpenShift. Um, very, very stable platform for us now. But uh, we also have uh, Azure Stack uh, in there as well. Um, you know, there's the, I think even as um, you know, Paul and those guys mentioned in the keynote, there's a lot of different things that you can kind of pull from each one of the, the technology providers uh, to help support you know, what, what we're doing, kind of take the best of breed from each one of them and use them in each solution. You know, organizations always complaining that they spend all this money on keeping the lights on and they're trying to make the shift and obviously cloud helps them do that and things like OpenShift, et cetera. What's that like in your world? Um, how much of your effort is spent on sort of maintenance and keeping the lights on? Sounds like you got a lot of cool new development activity. Can you describe that dynamic for us? Yeah, we've got a really good support staff. Um, you know, our, our group, uh, SSMO, um, when we build an application, they kind of take it back over and, and run everything. We've got a fabulous support team in the background mm. um, uh, into that, and it's, and it's on both sides, right? We have our United Healthcare applications that we build that have kind of their own you know, feature set because of what it's doing internally for us versus what we do on the Optum Insight side where it's, it's more commercial in nature. So they have a diff, some different needs. So um, you know, some of the things that we're developing even for cloud scaffolding that I mentioned in the keynote, um, we're, we're kind of working on both sides of the fence there to hit the different technologies that each one of them really need to be successful, but doing it in a way that it doesn't matter if you're on one side of the fence or the other. Um, it's, it's a capability that everybody will be able to use. So if there's a pattern on one side that you want to be able to use for a UHC application, by all means, go ahead and grab it, take it. Um, and a lot of what we're doing now is even uh, kind of crowdsourcing things, you know, and utilizing the, the really super intelligent people that we have, you know, over 10,000 developers, and so many of them, you know, we've got a lot of legacy stuff, Right, so there's some some old school guys that are still you know kind of doing their thing, but we got a lot of new people, uh, and they want to get their hands on the new fresh stuff, you know, and experience that. So there's a there's really a good vibe going on right now with how uh, how things are changing. All the TDP folks that we're bringing in, a lot of you know fresh college grads and things, and they love to see the new technologies, whether it's OpenShift or you know 
whatever, the uh, a lot of really getting into DevOps, um, trying to make that change, you know, uh, in a big organization is uh, is difficult. We got a little ways to go with that, but uh, that's so kind of next up. You're an interesting case study because you got a lot of the old and, and a lot of cool innovation going on. And and, yeah. and is it uh, how do you decide when to go? Because DevOps is not always the, the answer. Sometimes right. waterfall is okay. You know? yep. So how do you make that determination, and where do you see that going? That's, that's a great question. That's actually part of what my team does. So my specific team is all about cloud adoption and migration. So our charter is really to work across the enterprise. So whether it's Optum Insight, Optum Rx, United Healthcare, we are working with them to evaluate their portfolios of applications to figure out um, really legacy applications that we have that are still strategic, right? They've got life in them, they've got business benefit and we want to be able to take advantage of that, but at the same time, there's some of these monolithic applications that we look at, how can we take that application, decompose it down into microservices and APIs and things like that to make it available to other applications that are maybe are just greenfield or coming out now, but still need that same technology and information. So that's really what my team is doing right now. So we sit down with those teams and uh, go through an analysis, help them develop a roadmap, um, and it, sometimes that roadmap is two or three years long. You know, getting to fully cloud from you know where they're at right now in some of these legacy applications is a journey, mm -hmm. and it costs money, right? It's, there's a lot of budget concerns and things like that that go with it. So that's part of what we help develop is a business case um, for each one of those applications that we can help support uh, them going back and getting the necessary capital to do the, uh, the cloud migrations and the improvements and really the modernization of their applications. Um, you know, we started the program a couple of years ago and found that if you want to hang your hat on just going from old physical infrastructure or some of the original VMs that we had and just moving over to cloud infrastructure and whether that's you know, UCI, OpenShift, Azure, whatever, if, if you're going to do your business case on that, you're going to be writing a lot of business cases before you get one approved. Yeah. Right? It's all about modernizing the application. So if you fold in you know, the move to, to new infrastructure, cloud infrastructure, along with the ability to modernize that application, get them doing, you know, agile development, getting down the DevOps path, um, looking at automated testing, automated deployment, zero downtime deployments, all of those things, when you add them up together and say, okay, here's what your real benefit looks like, and you're able to present that back to the business and show them, you know, speed to market, speed to, speed to value, you know, is a new metric that we have. Um, you know, and getting things out there quickly. You know, we used to do quarterly releases or, you know, even biannual releases, and now we're at, you know, monthly, weekly. Mm -hmm. You know, some of our applications that are rel more relatively new, health for, health for me, you know, is our, if you go to the App Store, that's kind of our, our big app on the App Store. There's updates, you know, on a very frequent basis. So that's the operating model, really, that you're talking about, uh, essentially driving business value. And we had a practitioner on a couple weeks ago, and he said, if you just lift and shift to the cloud, you, and you don't change your operating model, oh, you're, you're you won't get boat. a dime. Yeah, you're missing you the boat. You know, maybe, maybe there's something, some value there, a little faster, but you're talking about you know, serious dollars if you can change the operating model, Is that, and that's what you found. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and that's the, um, it's a shift, and you've got to be able to prove it to the business that there's benefit there. Mm -hmm. Right, and sometimes that's hard. Uh, some of these cloud concepts and things are a little nebulous, so. It's hard because it's soft. It's soft, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, I mean, you're putting the business case together. The hard stuff is easy to document, but when you're talking about the soft benefits and you're trying to explain to them the value that they're going to get out of their team, switching from a waterfall development over to agile and DevOps and you know, automated testing and things like that, where I can say, hey, listen, you know your team over here that has been, you know, we, we took them out of their pocket from actually doing their day jobs for the last week because they needed to test this new version? If I can take that out of the mix and they don't have to do that anymore and they can keep on doing what they're doing and not get a week behind, what value is that for you? And all of a sudden they're like, oh really? We don't have to do that anymore? Like, no, we can create test scripts and stuff. We can automate your deployment. We can make it zero downtime. We have, there's an application that we're working on now um, that has, 19,000 uh, individual desktop deployments. And we're going to automate that, turn it into a software as a service application, host it on OpenShift, and completely knock that out. I mean, deployments out to 19,000 people take weeks. 
to get done. We only do a couple thousand a week because there's obviously going to be issues. So now you've got help desk tickets, you've got uh, desktop technicians that are going around trying to fix things or you know, dialing in, remoting into somebody's desktop to try to help figure that all out. Mm -hmm. We can do the whole deployment in a day and everybody logs in the next day and they've got the new version. You know, that kind of value you know, in, in creating real cloud-based applications is, is uh, what's driving the benefit for us. And they're, they're finally starting to really see that. And as we're doing it, you know, more application uh, you know, product owners are going, okay, now we're getting some traction. We heard what you did over here. Uh, come talk to us and let's let's talk about building a roadmap and figuring out what we can do. Yeah, mm -hmm. John, one of the uh, questions I got from the community after watching your keynote was they, they want to understand how you handle security and enforce compliance in this new kind of cloud development model. <laughs> you know? um, that, I mean, that's, that's beyond me. All I can tell you is that we have one of the most secure clouds um, out there. You know, our private cloud, um, is beyond secure. You know, we're we're working right now to try to get uh, into the public hybrid cloud space with uh, both AWS and Azure, and working through contracts and stuff right now. But one of the sticking points is our security has to be absolutely top notch. If we're going to do anything that has, you know, uh, HIPAA related data, you know, PHI, PII, PCI, any of that, it has got to be lock solid secure. And we have a I mean, a tremendous team led by Robert Booker. Um, he's absolutely fabulous. I mean, we're, uh, our, our whole goal is security-wise is, you know, don't be the next guy on the front page of the Wall Street Journal, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned public cloud. How do you make your decisions as to what application, what data can live in which public cloud? You said you've got Azure Stack and you've got OpenShift. H how, do you, how do you make those platform decisions? Well, right now, um, both OpenShift and Azure Stack are on our internal private cloud. Right. So we're in the process of kind of making that shift to move over towards public and hybrid cloud. Um, so I'm, I'm working with folks on our team to help develop some of those processes and determine what's actually going to be allowed. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of cases, the, uh, the PHI and protected data is going to stay internal. You know, and we'll be able to take uh, advantage of you know, hosting certain parts of an application in, on public cloud while keeping other parts of the data really secure and protected behind our, our private cloud. Yeah. Uh, Red Hat made an announcement, announcement this morning with AWS, yes. uh, with OpenShift. Sounds like that might be of interest to you. Absolutely. And how would that, would that impact what you're doing? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, I was talking with, uh, with Jim and Paul back behind the, the screen this morning and they were, we were talking about that and I was like, wow, that is a game changer. You know, with what we're thinking about doing in the hybrid cloud space, um, you know, having all of the AWS, you know, APIs and services and stuff available to us. You know, part of the um, objection that I get from some folks now is knowing that we have this move towards public and hybrid cloud in, internally, and the limitations of our cloud. You know, we're we're never going to be our private Optum cloud is never going to be. AWS or, or Azure, it's just not. I mean, they've spent billions of dollars getting those services and stuff in place. We, why would we even bother to compete with that, right? Mm -hmm. So we do what we do well, and a big portion of that is security, right? But we want to be able to expand and take advantage of the things that they have, you know? So that's, um, this whole announcement of being able to take advantage of those services natively within OpenShift, if we're able to expose that even internally on our own private cloud, well, I mean, that, that's going to take away a lot of the objections, I think, from even our own folks who are waiting to do the, the public hybrid cloud piece. When the Affordable Air, uh, Care Act hit, did your volume, like, spike? Um, and, and, and as things, you know, there's a tug of war now in Washington, it could sort of change again. Does that drive changes in your application development in terms of the volume of, of requests that come in and compliance things that you have to adhere to? Uh, and, and, and if so, does having a platform that's more agile, how does that affect your ability to respond? Yeah, it does. I mean, when we first got into the, uh, the ACA, there was uh, you know, a number of markets that we got into, and there was definitely a ramp up in, uh, in development, new things that we had to do on the exchanges, stuff like that. I mean, we even had uh, groups from 
uh, Optum that were participating directly with uh, the federal government because some of their exchanges were having issues and um, they needed some help from us. So we had a whole team that was kind of embedded um, with the federal government helping them out uh, just based on our experience doing it. And yeah, having the flexibility you know, in our own cloud to be able to spin up environments quickly, shut them down, uh, all that is, is Really, it's invaluable. So you know. the technology business moves so fast. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when people saw the first you know, virtualized service and went, oh my gosh, this is going to change the world. And now yeah. it's like, wow, we got to do better and you know, containers. And, and so you've gone for this like, amazing transfer. I mean, uh, I think it was 17 developers to 1,600, which is just mind boggling. Okay, and, that's, and, and you've got you know, technologies that have helped you, you know, do that, but five years down the road, <laughs> there's yeah, going to be a what's next. So what yeah. is next for you as you sort of put on your, your break out your telescope, what do you see? I got, there? I don't know. I mean, I never <laughs> would have predicted containers. <laughs> um, you know, when Even though they've been around forever. We, yeah, I mean, right, when, we, like, when we first <laughs> went to VMs, you know, back in the day, I was a guy in the server room racking and stacking servers and running cables and, you know, doing all that. So I've Thicken, seen it. Yeah go from one extreme to the next, <laughs> and you know, going from VMs was a huge switch. You know, right. um, building our own private cloud was you know, amazing to be a part of. Um, yeah, and now getting into you know, the, the container side of things, hybrid cloud, I think for us, really the next big step for us is hybrid cloud. You know, so we're in the process of, of, of getting that, I assume. I think by the end of this year, early next, we'll be, we'll be you know, a few steps into the hybrid cloud space. Uh -huh. um, yeah, and then beyond that, gosh, I don't know. So that's really extending the operating model into the, the hybrid cloud notion, bringing that security that you talked about, and that's a, you got a lot of work that's to do. That's a big task yeah. in, its, in itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, let's not go too far beyond that, John. Yeah. All right, well listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was really a pleasure having yeah. you. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. You're welcome. All right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE, we're live from Red Hat Summit in Boston. We'll be right back.